Hello everyone, I'm Jody and this is Russ Lover's Garage. I appreciate you stopping by the channel today. We've got to do a little bit of maintenance work. was out with the dually the other day pulling a trailer and I had begun to kind of feel a little bit of a vibration. Wasn't exactly sure what it was and Randy and I were picking some stuff up yesterday and uh, heard a noise and he said, man that sounds like a universal joint. I said, yeah, but the way you check yet, uh, if those of you who don't know, you, if it's not making a noise when you change gears from forward to you know from reverse to forward or whatever, get somebody underneath the uh, the truck and you can hold the brakes, mash the gas, and torque it up. That'll also tell you if you got a transmission mount or motor mount loose. But when I moved it from drive back to reverse, you could hear it very loudly clank. And Randy said, "Ooh, rear universal joint is about gone." So you guys can come under here with me, and I'll show you exactly what we've got. All right, I'm going to try to hold everything as steady as enough for you guys to see but there's the universal joint and there's the movement and that's the noise that we've been picking up so uh, this is certainly a bad thing I'm very lucky it didn't fall out on the road but uh, nonetheless we're gonna drop a new one in I'm gonna take you guys along for the trip yeah It's hard to visualize it when you're upside down. About it, you just have to keep switching back and forth because they, they give you just enough room, but it's not just enough room to use the same tool every time. Look at that. 
don't look any bad. <laughs> guys while we're under here let me show you a little something this is what's called a mid shift bearing or a mid drift bearing and basically this truck's got two um, two drive shafts it rides here yeah these things go out about every 30 or 40 thousand miles just depending on the brand and the quality you've got a uh, looks like a CV joint but it's actually a boot you've got another universal joint here and they slide together okay the only thing that I can find with Chevrolet and GM uh, this was an effort to give you better ground clearance in a four-wheel drive in a truck this size. Now, I do not understand why that would mean a difference to anybody, but I believe about 2005, these things all went to a single drive shaft. Uh, and if you think about it, you lose a lot of power and torque right here uh, with this, even though you get the ground clearance. So uh, probably one of the upgrades we're going to be doing before too much longer is taking all of this out even though I'm replacing putting a brand new universal joint in, we're going to take all of this out and put a single drive shaft in here because I'm not going to be going down through the woods in this truck. I'm going to be pulling trailers. So, uh, all right, let's get up top side, get this thing apart and put back together. All right, this is the new universal joint. Uh, not real sure whether I like it or not. It's an SKF, so it's a brand name, but it doesn't have a grease fitting, so it's all self-greased or uh, self-contained. They've got a, they've got a here uh, a screw screw, and I guess you could put a alamite fitting, but I don't know. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. I can always go back because this will be exposed once we get the end on it. Uh, just need to look at this and see kind of how this is supposed to go. Just had never seen anything like that. But this is the cap. It was off the old old joint. We'll check and make sure it's obviously the right size. But there should be needle bearings in here. Okay? We'll take one of these apart so you can see what the inside looks like. Alright. All of those little sticks, if you will, those are needle bearings. That's what should have been on the inside there. But obviously it's not. So, this thing is so worn, when I touched it, it's cracked and broke out a piece. It's cracked along here and cracked along there. So, uh... Fooey on me for not paying attention to that kind of stuff. But, if you come around here on this end, you can see how long this thing has been wearing. It's a thousand wonders that this thing hadn't flown apart long before now. But uh, you can bet I'm going to check everything else that's under there and make sure that we're right. we have got ourselves a mess trying to get everything out gone through and organized and put in a new shop I think we've got enough room to get this done Alrighty guys, real quick what I did, when these things get bound down, 
you take a large enough screwdriver and drive in under here and it'll do two things. It's obviously pinching these together, but at the same time it's lifting the back side up. All you got to do at that point is hold it with the screwdriver in that position and grab it with the needle nose and just pull straight up on it and these little clips will pop right out. All right, let's do this one more time. Now, if this one wants to cooperate, and of course, I would suggest, even though this is spring steel and it's been in, I would certainly suggest hanging on to these if you're working on any kind of equipment. They're not something you want to put back in and use all the time because I've got a brand new set uh, for this that comes with the universal joint. But more importantly, to have this thing, if you're broke down on the side of the road or something happens and you've got to have one just to put something back together to get by, this is one of them $2 parts that'll cause you to drink more.
It already fell out. All that work for that little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, ideally, you want to take this and put it in the vise and squeeze it together real slow. I don't have that option because the jaw of my vise won't open far enough. The new shop will have a bigger vise, so we won't have that problem. So I'm going to take my time and just work this thing in with a hammer on this side, and we'll flip it over once we set the joint in and do the same thing on the other side. If only it was that easy to get it out.
just a little bit further. I think about the only way I'm going to be able to do that is just kind of lightly persuade it with the hammer. Not going to be a problem now that we got the universal in there. It'll hold the bearings in place so we can get it down far enough. Okay. Okay, if you ever get a drive shaft made when it comes back from the, the drive line shop or if you're doing like I'm having to do and run between two shops, do yourself a favor. We're going to take this out of the old shop where we are now, down to the new shop, put it back in the truck. Please, <laughs> take two seconds and take this thing up. If these things fall off, number one, you're going to get dirt all in them, the bearings are going to go everywhere, and it's just going to make for a bad day. So just take a, take a little bit of time, some kind of tape, it doesn't matter, it could be anything. In this case, I've got some very poor quality painter's tape. Uh, we're just going to tape this thing up and hopefully get everything back down to the shop in one piece. That's, that's the plan anyway. This tape's really giving me a fit. I think 
one of the videos we're going to be is doing is undercoating the underside of this thing. I'm seeing some rust that I don't particularly like. Get our tape off of here. tab for those of you who don't know the time you're working like this to help you hold it in there's a little tab on both of these open sides of the universal you can set it up in there and it acts like a shelf it'll help hold everything in place while you get everything bolted back up just did make the holes big enough in these straps. And that is that. Woohoo! Alright guys, we got the universal joint back in. And one thing at the beginning of the video that I really kind of forgot, because uh, I just kind of take things like this for granted. Anytime you're working on a vehicle, uh, especially if you're doing anything along the drive line that's going to free that drive line up. In other words, it's not going to have ability to stay in gear, even though you've got parking brakes and things like that. Guys, always scotch your tires. Always put something in front of the tires. I'm on fairly level ground. I think there might be an inch and a half of fall over 30 foot here, so it's not like anything's going to run off. But at the same time, uh, many times you don't have that option. So always, always remember 
to secure the vehicle, whether that be on jack stands and not use a jack, or in this case, we just scotched the front tire. So guys, I negated to say that at the front. I want everybody to be safe. I want everybody to try to do things uh, that, that you think you can do. And I hope my videos help, uh, help you along the way. Thanks again so much for spending time on my channel, and as always, God bless.